Hi, this is David. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Azure AI Document Intelligence Studio. This used to be known as the Forms Recognizer. It's been rebranded and a few new features have been added to it. But in order to use it, I'm going to uh, navigate to documentintelligence.ai.azure.com. Brings this up here, the Document Intelligence Studio. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at some documents right here. These are all invoices. They're all PDF documents, but this will work with JPEGs. It'll work with Office documents, um, all sorts of things. Uh, images of, of these things. Um, what you'll notice is that every one of these documents has, a, has the same format. Right here, it's different text. But the same format. This is uh, something that invoice for Southridge video. There's the address that has some line items number one or more line items down here. Um, this is for Alpine Ski House, Enterprise Way, etc., and so on. And you can see that even the the people that are selling it. This one's from AdventureWorks. They're in Redmond, Washington. That one is from Microsoft. They're in Bellevue, Washington, and so on. So there's also some information as an invoice number, invoice date. What I want to do is I want to have a system that's going to read these and recognize, yeah, be able to pull out the customer name, for example, by knowing that it's right there, the customer address, knowing that it's right there, the invoice number, knowing that it's right there, things like that. So what I'm going to do, let me just go ahead and close all these. And inside of this document intelligence studio, you see that there's some pre-built models. So if it's an invoice that Azure AI already knows about, then I could use that one. If it's a, there's some standard receipts, there's health insurance cards, and my Blue Cross Blue Shield call that. So they all kind of look the same, just my name and the, the group number is different. There are some tax forms here. Of course, those look the same. It's just the numbers and the and the words and the names and the fields are different. Things like that. Um, I'm going to assume that I don't know any of this, so I'm going to use a custom extraction model right here. It's going to ask me to log in. I want to make sure I log in with my the correct account. And for some reason, it always brings me into the wrong directory. What I want to do is be in this directory right here. Switch to that. If you only have one director, you won't have that issue. But now I come down here and I click on custom extraction model. And I should see some projects that I've been creating already down here. But that's what I want to do. I want to create a new project. Let me do that. Create a project. I'll give it a name. I'm going to call this one GCast doc document intelligence. How about that? Maybe custom because I'm using custom invoices. All right, I don't really need the description. I click on continue. It's just, it's just navigating down this tab right here. And it's going to ask me two things. One is the name uh, and location of my document intelligence service. This is a service that's hosted inside of Azure. So I could go into the Azure portal and set this up in advance, but I don't really need to. I can just specify the subscription and a resource group. I'm going to create a new resource group. I want to call this one GCast uh, doc int. RG for resource group, okay. And then it'll ask me, what's the name of this document intelligence service? I'll call it GCast doc int. The location, I'm gonna put it into the East US region. That's pretty close to where I live. For the pricing tier, free or standard. I'm gonna use the standard, the free just one has uh, limitations about <clears throat> how many times you can call it per minute and the size of the documents, things like that. Standard is pretty cheap, particularly for the small sample size that we're gonna do right here. I'm not too worried about that. All right, and the API version, I just, it defaults to the most recent one. I'll just leave it at that. And I'll click on continue right here. And now it's gonna ask me, that was the location of the service. Now I want to, uh, the document intelligence service. Now it, we need to store these documents somewhere and we'll, we'll store them actually in Azure storage blob containers. So it's asking me where are, where is that Azure storage account? And I can specify that here by selecting a subscription and a resource group. I'll take the same resource group here, the storage account. Uh, I'm going to create a new storage account. I could of course do that and 
clear that and just create a new one. But I'll, I'll create a new one. I'll give it a name. I'll call it GCast doc int store. Put that also in East US. And for the pricing tier, I'll just take the cheapest one they have. I don't really need much for this. And the blob container, I'm going to create a blob container. Containers are sort of like uh, folders in a file system. And that's what I'll do. Invoices with the name of the container that will be created inside of this new storage account. Uh, I could put things in a subfolder beneath that container, but I won't. I'll just put it in the root folder of that container. I click on continue, and this just tells me what I've selected so far. And then I can click on this to create a project. And that'll create this service. And it'll create this Azure storage account. It'll create a um, a, a container within that storage account, and it'll also create this project inside of here. Typically, this takes about 60 seconds. So I'm going to pause the video right now and return in a minute. And we are back. It took maybe a minute and a half to do that, and it created a new project, new document intelligence project right here and brought up the interface for that project. There's not much going on here. I'm on the label data tag, and this is where I I tell it what documents that I wanted to analyze. What are these invoices or other kinds of forms that I want to analyze? And I showed you those earlier. They're right here. And I can either click here to browse for them, or I can just do a drag and drop and just take these five invoice PDFs right here, drop them right there. And then I get this dialogue right here. And this says, do I want to uh, analyze auto label and manual label, or do I want to just analyze and manual label. So if I run layout, it'll just do steps one and three. If I do this one, it'll also do step two. And what auto label means is if I click on run now. It says I already have a model that matches this general outline of this uh, this form that I'm going to submit. They all match this where the addresses in this location and the um, invoice numbers in that location and so on. Uh, I don't have a model like that. I'm going to create a custom one. So this is what I want for this right here, the run layout that skips the auto label. So I'll click on run now. And it brings it all in. It starts to do a little bit of analysis in here. And there we are. And what I want to do now is I want to start to label these things. So I've got a few things here, like up here. This is the company name. It's always in the same spot. Company name is always up there. The address is always right there. So I'm going to start to identify that. I'll click on this right here. Every time I click on something, it highlights one word. I'm going to click again to highlight the second word. If I click something that I've already clicked, you can unselect it. But essentially, right here is the spot. I'm going to have the, I'll call it the vendor. Oops, do that again. In here, I'll type in vendor name right there. I'll press enter and ask me what kind of a field is this? Is it a, or what kind of information is this? Is it a field? That just means just a piece of static text. Is it a selection mark? That's just basically a true false checkbox. Or is it a signature, which would be something handwritten? I'm going to select field right here for that. I'll do the same thing for this right here. I'm going to highlight all the words in the vendor address. I'm going to create a field called vendor address here and that's a field okay i'll do the same thing over here this is the customer name that's a field and this is the customer address all that part right there so i'll call that customer address i like to be really explicit and clear if somebody looks at that there's no confusion what exactly that is, I've named it customer address. Uh, over here, this one actually, uh, this might have multiple lines, this table right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this little icon here to create a table. And this will create fields, I can specify them. I could click on them and specify what these are, but it's already figured it out. Okay, this, this column is labeled invoice number and that's where the invoice number is. This is called invoice date, et cetera. So I'm gonna auto label those and create a new table and hit enter. And I'll give that table a name. I'll say, uh, call this one line items. 
and it asks me, is this a dynamic table or a fixed table? A fixed table means we know exactly how many rows there are. I probably could get away with it here because the set always has one row, but I'm going to make it dynamic because I want it to be smart enough if it gets an invoice that has two, three, four rows in it, then I want to be able to figure that out. So I'm going to say dynamic here. I'll click on continue, and it gave names to these right here. Like, for example, there's invoice number, invoice date, invoice due date, charges, and that ID. If I didn't like those, I could come here and just say rename that column. And, you know, if I want to say NO instead of number, for example, or whatever. I'll leave this as it is right now. But that's that's what it's going to do. And I can also, if I don't care about this one, maybe I don't care about the VAT ID, uh, I can delete that or I can insert a new column after that, et cetera. But I'll click finish right here. And now I've labeled everything on here. I just have to do it for one of these. I don't have to do all of them because what I can do now is I can train this and look at all these and it'll figure out where they are. There's a button right here that says train. And that brings me down to the models here. And I'm gonna create a model. I'm gonna call this one invoice model right here. Uh, but it doesn't like, doesn't like spaces, so I'll do that. I don't need a description. And then the build model, I've got a couple of options here. Neural is probably the simplest one right here. Template, first you need to do, you need more data than just one. I'm gonna train this on one because there's they all look very similar. Um, I could probably increase the accuracy of it by training it on multiple, by doing, going through that same exercise where I selected the customer address and the vendor name and so on for each one of these. But I'll do this right here. Um, and uh, to do the, the template one, you need multiple ones. And also template is, um, it takes longer to do. It's it's better for handwritten notes, but for this purpose, neural is good. And then I click on train. And this kicked off the training. If I want to see where we are, I click on go to models. You see models up here on the left. Go to models. It just takes me right there. And you can see right now it says not started. But if I click on refresh, it has started. It is running right now. And eventually it's going to say complete or finished or something like that. I could keep clicking refresh. But the last time I ran this for just five documents, it took about 15 to 17 minutes. So I'm going to pause the video again, and I'll come back in a little while when it is finished. We are back and the training is finished as indicated by the status it is now succeeded right here. We're going to move on to the test, but to get there, I'm just going to click on this model ID and you can see that it has information about all the fields. And if I click on test, all it does is take me over to this tab right here and here I can test it. And I'm going to test it by dragging one document. And then I'm going to run the analysis on this. And what I'm hoping will happen when I click run analysis here is it'll figure out that this is the, uh, the vendor address, this is the vendor name, this is the customer address, this is the address and name, this is the invoice, et cetera. And in fact, it did. If we look at the invoice numbers, it's 332736 right here. And that's exactly what it is. So yeah, that's right. If we look at uh, things like uh, invoice date, 425 2017 look up there that's exactly what it is it got it right it gives a confidence level here of 77 percent 36 percent right here uh if i hover over it, you can also see this there's the vendor address right here or the confidence level of 96.8 percent there's the customer address confidence level of 98 percent that right there, only 29.5% uh, for that for some reason. But these ones up here are really high confidence level, and it figured it out. It knew where to look for the customer name and so on. Now, of course, this isn't the end game. Just to use this interface, you probably want to build an application, and you want to use API calls to call this model. And that's what this shows you here is the endpoint, the API version you're using here, the service resource, the container, all, all this information is specified in here. In a future video, I'm going to show you how to use API calls to actually call this model. But in this video, I've shown you how to create a model that's based on a the AI 
Document Intelligence Service. This is David. Thank you for watching. Thank you.